Hi everyone, it's Tracy. Thanks so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a card with the Blue Knight Rubber Stamp Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly Stamp. This is the card that we're going to be making. The Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly Stamp is a red rubber stamp that has a large butterfly and then a smaller butterfly. All Blue Knight Rubber Stamps cards come on these really handy dandy laminated cards. You can just store them then. Um, with the cling on it <clears throat> makes for a really easy storage. <clears throat> so without further ado, let's get started. Um, I have here a pre-stamped butterfly, large butterfly and small butterfly. I have my Copic and alcohol various uh, colors of markers here. And so what I'll do is start coloring and talk at the same time. And this is not going to take me long to color, so um, hopefully you will bear with me here as I just go ahead and get this color down, and then we'll move on to the next step here. The um, This stamp is one of the new releases from Blue Knight Rubber Stamps. And this is the first one that I was able to make a card and a video with. Um, I think they're, I think that this butterfly is gorgeous and, um, I have a brother scan and cut. So once I color it in, I'm able to then just use my scan and cut to uh, trim it, but you could also just trim it with fussy cut because it's quite a clear image and you would have no trouble with that as well. So I'm going outside of the lines here a little bit, but it's okay because my brother scan and cut will trim right up against that and I'll be okay with that. It's all right with me. Um, had a pretty rough day today. I'll tell you what happened. Um, Saturday, I was petting my dog and she loves to have her ears pet, petted. Like most dogs do, right behind her ears. Well, I was... Um, feeling just rubbing you know just trying to you know spend some time with her and I felt this lump behind her ear on the outside and I looked a little closer and there was this great big by the way that was B05 Copic and the first one was R29 lipstick red and Copic this is B05 process blue now I'm going to switch over to the Style Foul markers. Uh, they have a little bit of a nice color that I like to use. Well, they have a lot of nice colors, but this is called Marigold. It's 172. So this was on Saturday, and I looked, and I looked a little bit closer, and it was matted up like blood behind her ear. And for the life of me, I could not figure out what the heck was going on with her ear. So I looked a little bit closer and it just looked like there was some kind of a scratch or something, but I really couldn't tell because the blood was so matted up. So we gave her a bath. We also tried to get underneath where that dried up blood was. We couldn't. We even used like hydrogen peroxide. No matter what we did, we were not able to see what was going on. So I called on Monday and I asked if I could get her in, and they said the soonest they could get her in was today. So, okay, fine, that's fine. So the next color I'm gonna be using is also Style File number 170, Deep Yellow. Um, the vet that saw her today, I've never seen him in there before. He is new to them. He's certainly not a new vet uh, because he's not young. So I was like, okay, this is going to be all right. He's going to be able to, you know, take care of her. But he was nervous and the dog was nervous and the dog was just like prancing the whole time and like, you know, foaming and at her mouth and her, and like, she's not a panter. So she was really panting and just, you could tell she was like really upset because what they did first was the vet assistant went in with a swab and was like swabbing her ear on the inside and the one ear she just could not get in. Well, here that's the ear that has the sore behind it. So she didn't want her near that ear. And it was like very traumatic. It, it just got worse from there. So um, I hope this doesn't trigger anybody. 
um, me talking about my dog and what we went through today. So they got the culture and they're like, okay, it's not a bacterial infection. It's not a yeast infection. You know, it's not ear mites or anything. But they said, you know, there's something going on with that. We're going to have to take her back and clean that and, and shave it, like shave the hair and stuff down. And also um, shave that part there where the dried up blood was to see what's going on. So they said, you know, because she's nervous and antsy and everything, we're going to try to put a muzzle on her. We'll try to do it here. Then they, 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 she, she just was having none of it. She's never been muzzled before. She's really sweet. She's 11 years old, but man, she fought today like she was a, a one year old pup. So they said, well, we're going to take her back into the surgery room where it's a little bit more contained and we can, you know, I guess deal with her better for lack of a better word. So they took her back and, and as I'm sitting there, I hear my dog like crying in agony, you know, just horrible. I mean, and I can only imagine what she's going through. She's probably scared out of her wits. So she's like crying, you know, whimper and I could hear it. So the doctor comes back in and he says, you know, she's resisting us. She's, she's scared. We know she's not a mean dog, you know, but she's just really scared and anxious. This is E35. And she, he said, is it okay with you if we, um, if we have to, we might have to sedate her. And I said, I would rather you not sedate her. I said, I would rather, I'm thinking to myself, you know, you've got to be kidding me. You deal with dogs every day. She's not the biggest dog. She weighs 74 pounds. You know, she's not the biggest dog. She's certainly not a mean dog. I'm thinking to myself, can't you just, you know, handle her? Like, you know, like, come on. I mean, I know she's being difficult and everything. And it's no wonder because it's so sensitive there. But I was like getting a little frustrated because, you know, they kept coming back and like giving me the play by play instead of just taking care of it. And, you know, so anyways, they go, okay, well, we're going to do this. We're going to, and I'm like, okay, let's do it. So, um, that's when I could hear her really, really crying out for me. You know, she was just like howling, but of course she had like the muzzle on, so she couldn't really howl, but I could just hear it. it was, she was terrified and like, I'm starting to cry because I'm hearing her upset and there's really nothing I can do about it because I know they have to get that area clean so they can see what the heck's going on with that wound. But the doctor had said to me, it's definitely some kind of trauma. Like it's not, he said, you know, once we get a closer look at it, I'll be able to tell you. So he comes back and he said, she has two wounds, which I saw both of them, but I really wasn't concerned about the one on the left because it didn't seem very big. I was really concerned about the one on the right. He said, the one on the left is like really tiny and it's, you know, really, it's not much of anything, but the one on the other side, he said, it's like deeper. And he said, I might have to put stitches in it. And he said, I'm going to try not to put stitches in it. I think we can treat it like an open wound, but do I have your permission if I need to sedate her to put stitches in it? I'm like, holy cow, the poor dog, you know, going through all this. Now you're going to sedate her. And that's when I said, I really prefer if you don't sedate her. So they didn't sedate her. They were able to get it clean. They were able to get the area shaved. So here, it's a bite. It's some kind of animal must have bit her. You know, whether it was another dog or whether it was some other kind of animal, I don't know. Isn't that pretty, you guys? That turned out so nice. That is such an easy, easy image to color. So in, in the interest of time, I um, created a few in advance. I've already colored these and cut them out with Scan and Cut. And each one has its own little mini butterfly to go with it. This one's colored a little bit differently. I used to cut, I used like a different yellow and a different blue, but I don't think it really matters. I think it still looks really nice. When I came home tonight, I um, was spending some time with my son. I, I had a late night because I had a meeting after work. So I did some background, some backgrounds um, with some embossing folders and, and distress oxides. So I thought what I would do is use some of these backgrounds uh, to create a cards for um, 
Uh, this one actually I could probably use. It's almost like a salmon color. Uh, maybe I could turn this butterfly sideways. The thing is, the butterfly is so big that once you trim your panel down, you know, it, it hangs off a little bit. Now, it fits perfectly on an A2 card base, but um, like a lot of times I'll do a panel first and then I'll do my card. So, like you can see, it's pretty close. So, we'll go ahead and do that with that. And then over here on this one, we've got sort of like a sunrise, sunset, or whatever. I think it looks really cool. I thought I would just put the butterfly in the middle. I don't necessarily have to use this second butterfly. I might be able to use that one over there. But let's focus on this card first. So anyways, when they finally brought her back to me, she's like, you know, her hair, they clipped her nails. They shaved behind both of her ears, and I was able to see more clearly the gash that was in the back of her, the back of her behind her ear. I mean, it's like an inch long, and it seemed like it was pretty thick, and it actually has like a hard lump underneath of it because the doctor said that it was the reaction to the inflammation, um, like the skin underneath the skin was like, I guess swollen or whatever from the inflammation. So she's taking an antibiotic twice a day, an anti-inflammatory twice a day, and I have to take her back on Saturday because they want to recheck the wound. And if it seems like it's going to be um, challenging, they might decide to put a couple stitches in it. You know, really, it probably should have been stitched when I looked at it today after I got home from work and I got a closer look at it. I'm thinking... Yeah, that probably should have been stitched, but I think the doctor was just trying really hard to avoid you know, putting any kind of her any, any kind of anesthetic because I didn't really want that to happen. I just wasn't what I had gone in there thinking was going on. Now, you know, I'll do whatever the vet says that's best for my dog, but um I just was like really worried about that. And I just I just, I guess mentally, like sometimes it's better to be prepared for stuff. I find that if you spring something on me, like medically or like dentistry or something, I have a really hard time getting through it. Like I do better just knowing what I'm in for and somehow preparing myself for it, but not as well if it's just kind of sprung on me. So anyways, um, got her home and they also sent us home with the cone of shame, which is the big plastic collar that you put around their neck if they start scratching their wound. Well, she hasn't done that yet. And it's starting to scab over really good. So we're glad about that. But yeah, $250 later, you know, we've got a dog who somehow got into trouble with another animal. And, you know, where we live is out in the country. Like there's a lot of farms and everything all around us. Um, so yeah, she definitely has a little bit of freedom, but that's going to end because we can't take any chances. You know, I, I can't afford another vet bill like that. So for now on, we're just going to have to really watch her. So, um, if she does start scratching it, then we'll definitely have to put the cone around her neck. But so far, knock on wood, she hasn't, you know, really picked at it or anything. Yeah, so basically the vet said when we bring her back that we should take take and give her some medicine the night before to help her, like with her nerves. And then we should um, give her a dose of it again the next day for her nerves. So I put congratulations on that card stock and then I'm going to trim that and put that right here in the corner. So that's the second card. That's going to be the second card. Uh, I'm not going to trim this right now for the sake of time. But I do want to put this one together. I think this is really pretty. This is sort of a, like a floral. I went over it with mustard seed. Then I went over it with um, marmalade, spiced marmalade. I really like the way that one turned out. So hopefully she will not mess with it, pick at it, do anything to cause any damage to the wound. The, the vet said as long as we keep it dry, we don't have to put any kind of cream on it. He said don't put any peroxide on it because peroxide is not going to help the tissue heal. You know, he definitely doesn't want to see us put peroxide on it. So, because that's what I was doing up until that point. 
and we had to get her a rabies booster. She had just had her rabies shot in May, so we had to have a booster on that because they don't know what bit her. Oh, I'll tell you. It's been a stressful day. So I'm glad to be home to be playing with this beautiful, gorgeous stamp set that I actually, I actually colored these, most of these last night and cut them out with my scan cut this morning before I went to work. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this one on because the wingspan is so big, we're just gonna have to turn it sideways. And I have the work, well that's congratulations, that goes on that one, whoops. Uh, since I've already done congratulations, I did thinking of you on the original one. My other sentiment is thank you. And these are all from Blue Night Rubber Stamp. All these sentiments are from Blue Night Rubber Stamp. Various different sets. Um, recently when I placed an order, Lynn, the owner of Blue Night Rubber Stamp, sent me a couple of these sentiments in a baggie so that I could use them in my cards. So that was really cool. Yeah, so that one says thank you. So we'll have congratulations on one and thank you on the other. And we might as well put these butterflies to use. Because I don't think I'll be making any more. Well, I have one more to make, but he has his own smaller butterfly to go with him. I just have to figure out where to place these. Plus the sentiment. Yeah, I think I might do that. Right there, turn it that way, and then turn this one the other way. Yep, that's what I'll do. And that's card number. So we've got three here. This is the first one, this is the second one, and this is the third one. Number two and number three do not have their sentiments on them yet, but one will say congratulations and one will say thank you. And then as far as what I just colored in, I can cut that out with my scan and cut and mount it to some, I was really like into this theme of sort of orangish, yellowish, you know, this is a, another embossing folder that I used. And then this embossing folder too. What's nice about this size is I could put the butterfly and it pretty much can go wing to wing on the base without having to turn sideways. So I'll definitely complete that card. Um, that's it. I just wanted to show you this beautiful card set. Um, it was funny because right before I went live, I saw that Nancy Stamps was also posting a video with this uh, stamp. Uh, the tiger <clears throat> swallow tail butterfly so Nancy I haven't seen your video yet but after I get done recording mine I will check out yours and um, you guys I'll post some photos on Instagram of the finished cards I mean finished finished cards and I'll show you what my Instagram handle is here in case you don't know it I want to thank all the people who have been su subscribing to my channel the last couple of days. I really appreciate it. My goals get to 500 and then to get to 1,000. Um, I have a lot of prizes to give away once we get to 500. And on my next video, you can check out me revealing what some of those prizes are going to be. Thanks for tuning in. Um, my blog is thehopefulcrafter.blogspot.com. My email is thehopefulcrafter at gmail. Shoot me an email with your address and I'd be happy to send you one of these cards. That's all I have for now. I hope you have a great night and remember to stay hopeful. Bye-bye.